Let me my ego, been in beast mode, got a halo Point blank range, might drop me amigo Yeah, I'm too good, I don't need no cheat code Might serve you on the side like Pico Ooh, Have a nice trip, dog, go find talent You gon' need every little piece Cause right now all I see is way below average Come to find out, yeah, I really am savage Take my feelings a rip for every single one of you To try to sell me a gimmick I got a bargain to pick with a couple different individuals I'm mixing the chemicals Every single ounce of pain to set me up on the pinnacle Separating from the crowd, I had to do a self-interview Fed a luxury action, I had to pop me a Benadryl Gotta stay away before I pass out, this is critical Can't stick around with the two-faced pitiful Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Live in the Studio. Today we are here with some very good friends. Our guest today is the one and only Scott Miller. How are you guys? <laughs> and joining him is Jonah Green. Yes, sir. Welcome back, man. Hey, good to man. have I'm both glad to be you. here. Good to have both of you. You guys, mm -hmm. you guys know each other from like way back. Oh yeah. Dude, tell that. How long tell, has it been? Tell that story. How long has it been? Bro, uh man, I think I met Preston in 20. 13 or 14 you ended so up on the show yeah. yeah so i think 2013 2014 i met i met preston i met you probably in 2016 because we did a show together it was with like preston 2015 2016 yeah it was 2015 which would make 2015 you like yeah 15 years old right? it would make yeah. me you had to be yeah I, I was oh, young yeah. man because homie I, <laughs> <laughs> oh bro you didn't say okay we're gonna go into this yeah man. we're gonna go into this oh, so God. <laughs> all right it's gonna be a good episode to get no, no, man. Man. oh man so Dude, like people are gonna know man bro okay so hey this is uh an open door for you to get to know scott miller yeah. but anyways this is so the fast track and this is the, yeah. <laughs> get it over yeah. with bro just, get, let's it let's over just with. get it over with jonah <laughs> so basically i had a show and i remember um that's when my uh, knee was jacked up right so i was performing in a chair he was performing uh, yeah in, in a, a chair. chair on stage so nice. you can roast me for that as well but anyways break a um, leg to a whole nother level <laughs> you know what I mean? they had to Did roll you me break out your leg? uh i popped my knee nice. at work Ow. and i had a show coming up so they Preston was like hey let's just put you in a chair and just roll you out once like you know the music starts <laughs> yeah, so that's awesome. yeah it was awesome so basically before um preston actually went up um i had preston and some other guys run to me and said Hey, listen, um, we got a guy here that's, you know, uh wanting to open up for you guys. I was like, okay, uh or open up for myself. And I was like, okay, cool. Who is this person? He said, um, well, his name was Thunderhead at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thunderhead. Nice. 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 So I'm here like it. double what I'm like, oh. I right, you know, I'm being graceful. I'm like, yeah, man, he's a young kid, just go ahead and get on stage. Man. So they talking Go ahead. Where did Thunderhead come from? Like, you the, know, I gotta interject this. I gotta know where did okay. that? Where did that? You know, when did you think of that? <laughs> I remember I was homeschooled with my buddy. Okay, and we had these books that was teaching us about different clouds. Okay, and one of the cloud mm. was named Thunderhead, and we was like, "Yo, <laughs> yo, dude, that would be sick." Yeah. for a rap name. <laughs> okay, and so I went with it for like two or three years, man. Yeah, and it was like not it. Yeah. <laughs> Once I realized, I'm like, "Yo, this is not it, bro. This is not it." You just so, switched your name. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, "This not it." All right, so, so yeah, so so Thunderhead, yeah, we were like, man, you know, because I, I I remember being there, and I was like, yeah, let me just go ahead and just put this man on stage. So this man gets on stage, Dude, and so I bad. was literally like, so bad. people are going to never come back to my shows. <laughs> it was that bad, really it was bad. so bad. I was in tears, laughing because I've never in my life, with all the respect, I love my brother. Yeah, I like the way you touch my knee. Never in my life have heard any worse rap than that yeah so it i was, was bad, like bro. bad it was bad it was so bad. i can see why his his rap lyrics kind of connected with his name so his title at the yeah, time. i know i know that <laughs> i think maybe jonah and i talked before and he said like and i, I just want to get into your backstory so mm -hmm. i guess I'll, I'll slow down real quick tell me tell people who don't know you like who you are what you do yeah where you come from so Give your introduction here in i would say like 2013 is when I really started to get into music. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm from Charlotte originally, um, born and raised. Uh, Scott Miller, 21 years old. Um, I come from a Christian background. Um, and that's originally what I started doing was Christian hip hop. Yeah. Um, but over time, I kind of like steered away into more of like, right what I feel. Mm -hmm. Um but of course, I keep my my music clean. Yeah. That was one thing that I always told myself I would do is keep my music clean. But in like 2013, man, I uh, I really like realized like I can do this. 
Um, so I started writing and um, I had nowhere to record. Mm -hmm. So my mom actually knew some people who had a studio. Yeah. And I went and recorded with them. And that kind of was like where everything like took off. Yeah. I had like CDs and everything made and all that. And so, you know, it went from just writing to, oh, now I'm recording yeah. to, wait, I can do this. You to know what I'm saying? Want to join yeah, shows. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, everything just kind of like <laughs> progressed. Um, but other than that, man, it's uh, it's been a journey. I'll yeah. tell you that. Yeah. A lot of lessons learned. So from Thunderhead <laughs> to Scott Miller. Yeah. So what was the, so, I mean, you say it was bad, right? Like yeah, that's your yeah. description of yep. that first show or whatever. Was that like your first show? <laughs> Would that have been Basically, like the very first time? Basically. And what, why did you walk up? Like, was that, did you walk up before the show or was it just in the moment you said, I'm just going to take a shot? No, it was, I had met Preston, mm -hmm. my engineer, and he was like, we have this show um, you can be a part of it. You can do like a song or two or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. Um, and I'm not like a stage guy at all by any means. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can only imagine like the, the nervousness I had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it was so bad, dude, that all the guys that were performing there jumped out on stage with me on there and was jumping around to hype me up oh, because okay. it was like that bad well that's so cool. i had, yeah, I had yeah, yeah like i had yeah. no stage presence <laughs> i had nothing so it was one of them things like i had to learn yeah um now was that are you like just curiosity is that you feel like the because obviously you can rap I mean, your stuff's great. <clears throat> I appreciate it. <laughs> <man. laughs> Were was it like you could do it then? It was just the stage just like got in your head right off the bat, and it just made it like like just tough to get it to where you could do it. Like, yeah, it was. It was like you know, I was young, mm -hmm. and I didn't listen to like a lot of different artists because mm -hmm. I feel like artists are like your biggest influence when it comes to you know yeah. whatever. So it was like I had I didn't have any like influence really. Yeah, and so I had no like flow on a track. Okay. I, I I like I was like, oh, I, I can write. You know, when you do it, you're like, oh, this is dope. Yeah. But then you look back on like your first stuff, and you're like, yeah, Yo, that's trash, yeah, bro. It's hard to be happy. <laughs> so anything in the it past. is, yeah. and you know, but I feel like that led me to you know where I am now to look back at where I came from, and like I perfect myself like so much. Yeah. Um. If if I don't think a track <clears throat> is a hit. I don't release it. Yeah. So there's like hundreds of things like in a vault that I have that'll probably never see the light of day. And so a lot of people, they they just release whatever. Yeah. But I can't do that. Yeah. Because I actually care what people think. I know mm -hmm. everyone's like, don't care what people think. You shouldn't care. But like I do. Yeah. So, but. Kind of can't help it. I can't help <laughs> it, man. I can't. I, we, we're similar in the stage fright thing. Mm -hmm. Like I watched you perform mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I suck. Like, yeah. like I can't yeah. perform oh, at all. Yeah. Like, and, and this is like not even a couple, like a year ago, I think. Yeah. Like it, when we went to an event that you were doing your thing at, I was like, dude, Jonas, yeah. like yeah. for real. And, and that's one of those yeah. moments where I realized how long you've been doing it. I mean, yeah. bro, he was better in a chair than I was, <laughs> you know, standing. <laughs> So I, <laughs> I was getting in the chair. What do, you, <laughs> what do you feel like like over time? And maybe you both answer this too. Yeah. You're kind of like an outside perspective, but we'll start with you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Over time, like what do you think helped you get from A to Z with that? Like from where you were then to where you are now? You know, just practicing. Yeah. Um, I had I just had good people in my circle that um I didn't have before them. So when I like had met my buddy Preston and then I had met Jonah and everything, like we would make songs and then literally like be in a studio and like act like we were performing the songs in front of people. Mm. And that really helped me get like a stage presence. Was that, did that mm -hmm. come from Preston or like, yeah, yeah, like, that? like yeah. me and him, like he really pushed that on me. Mm. Uh, you know, to this day, he, he, he would tell me, he was like, man, he's like, I saw something in you. Mm. And he's like, that's why I helped mm. you. And I'm like, looking back on that, looking where I'm at now, it's like, man, these people saw something I didn't yeah. in myself. So it's like, <clears throat> I just, I love them for that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Now from the outside, what would you say? Like seeing yeah. him grow, either either like, what do you think did it or what's like the biggest change? Yeah, what well, what's, what's, what's crazy is um after that show, we talked and I told him, I said, listen, man, let's get coffee. And um, I like coffee. Oh, yeah. So many good things <laughs> to start right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> mm -hmm. so we met at Floyd and Blackie's up in Cramerton, you know, Um, and I just literally told him, like, 
I put this in his ear. I said, listen to your favorite artists. Look, listen to how they deliver in their songs um, and how creative they can be. I was, but then I didn't warn him, don't become them. Don't try to, yep. you know, make your imprint the same as theirs. Just like learn from them. Oh, and I did try to become yeah. Yeah. some of them, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But And that's normal. It's part of growth. Yeah, you know? it's part of your growth. Yeah. yeah. You, I mean, you Im- you imitate your artist. That's one of the best you ways know? to learn. Like how do you? Yeah. Learn, we were talking about guitar earlier. Yeah. Before mm-hmm. the show started, like how do you learn guitar? You don't you don't like pick up the guitar and learn your and learn your own songs you haven't written because you yep. suck and can't right. play yet. Correct. You learn songs that other people have written first, and and exactly. from there it builds a framework you can you mm-hmm. can sort of work off of. And exactly. Yeah. And so, so, like, who would you say oh. is an influence for you? Like mm-hmm. the main ones. <sighs> top three the the top three the biggest one would be nf okay um that's who like influenced mm-hmm. me the most um the <clears throat> next one would probably be juice world okay um i loved his style when he came out and i heard his style it literally like i was able to do a whole different sound yeah um mm-hmm. so I'd, i would say nf juice world and like mm, this hard one Oh man, because I have like a can I? Uh, you can do more, yeah. Do however many you want. You know who Hobson is? Mm-mm. Oh, dude, mm-hmm. Hobson, amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's this one yeah. song um, I love by him um, where he talks about like his Christianity and his walk of faith mm. and like how people um, hated him for stepping away from faith. Um, but you know, NF Juice World, Hobson, and probably like Post Malone, man. Okay. I like I just kind of like forged my own sound through that yeah. and you know Juice World was really a big one yeah um because when like I said when he came out I was strictly just like rapping yeah I refused to sing I refused to do any of that I was like I can't sing yeah okay, I don't have the voice for that and I was like this guy sing rapping you can do that yeah, yeah you yeah. know what I'm saying yeah and so that's when like my whole sound like changed yeah so mm-hmm. that's awesome yeah, yeah I l- I love hearing that too because like those are all younger rappers Mm -hmm. and you're a younger artist and so it's like all those guys were influenced by other guys were influenced by other guys it trickles down man down and it's like it's all like it's why i think you start to see genres cross so much more you do yeah and it's because it's everybody being influenced by everything that they were growing up and all of a sudden like you just cannot predict what's going to come out in a way you can for like a year and a half but like after but that, then that like, next guy comes yeah, out and then the next after, guy yeah it's it's pretty crazy um mm. well so what's the i know we were talking about you two what's the yeah. first thing you guys collaborated on was that intentional you remember was there anything no, i remember you remember yeah um, no it was before Nobody intentional when I feel Lo- it's called losing my mind losing my mind yeah, there you go. yeah that was yeah. my song it was losing my mind yes. and uh i needed someone on a hook and preston was like let's call jonah <laughs> And so okay. Jonah came in and he he literally ripped it, man. That's that was an crazy. old song. That was the first song. We're about to play it for them. It's still that, on SoundCloud. That bro. was the first song that I ever put out mm-hmm. on like a platform. A platform. And it got views sent. Really? It got views. It was son. crazy. Man. Can you not? You can't find it anymore. It's on SoundCloud. It's on yeah. SoundCloud. Yeah. I was gonna say yeah. we probably That's where listened you to go. it when we did. We your found deep all your down. old oh, stuff. Okay. We found yeah. all your old stuff on SoundCloud as well. <laughs> that was where we were looking for those. Yeah. Now oh, man. I want to. I wanted to ask you, and I didn't write this down, and so mm-hmm. I apologize for uh-huh. being on the fly. But I know I I have listened to like just about everything I can find of yours as far as like Spotify goes. Talk to me about how you approach features because every feature you do is like mm. really good, mm. like really really good. You definitely like shine on all yeah. those things that you go in. So that approach of like, I'm going to go into another artist song yeah. and like offer this up. So, you know, the way I look at it is I'm a very competitive person. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though, you know, people, they say, you know, you shouldn't be competitive, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't want to be, you know, better than somebody else or whatever. But there's that voice in the back of my mind that's like, you're on someone else's song. Mm-hmm. This can get you somewhere that you don't, you you're not now. Yeah, it's other people. Right. Yeah. So you have to just rip it. Yeah. 
You have to. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can tell. Like, dude, when I heard Intentional for the first time, oh, man. Like, I love that song. It's lovely. And I'm like listening to it, yeah. and I'm like, it keeps getting better. It keeps getting better. <laughs> Jonah does his thing, and then you come on and do yours. And I'm like, who is this guy? Like, uh, I remember pulling you aside, like, you need, yeah. like, who's on this song? Yeah. And that was yeah. like my introduction to you. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, okay, <laughs> that is not like a throwaway feature. Yeah. That right. was like a, I'm gonna go do the absolute best I can do on this other person's song and treat it like an opportunity. Right. You well, can totally tell it. It's easier to because when you have like someone um, who wants you to feature, right? Mm-hmm. And they send you the song with their verse, mm-hmm. they set the tone. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like, okay, well, they flowed like that and they said this. So I can flow like this and I can say that. Gotcha. So when you hear the tone they bring, it's like, okay, well, I have to bring a completely different tone. Yeah. So it's honestly easier to do better on a feature. Yeah. Because someone else don't set the tone, so now You're you working, can you have a exactly. you know. Yeah, okay, I got you. So yeah. I got you. Is mm-hmm. there a, is there a collab in the works with you two like sooner than later? Meant to be honest, you guys should not right now, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Intentional was the last one. Yeah, right? yeah. that was what twenty twenty. Oh yeah. gosh, yeah. It was, it was funny. Yeah, twenty twenty. No way. It's, was yeah, it really? It's that long? Man? Yeah. Oh, God. It was funny, I'm man. Trying to get things moving. Here. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear another one. See, we we've done um. We've like probably like written some songs together. Like he's helped out with, um, you know, heartbreak, of course. But is that um, the name of the song? Yeah, heartbreak. Yeah, that yeah, song. Yeah, he's helped, he's helped me, you yeah. know, with that That's song. I've had something one, complete, right? huh? That was a more recent one, right? That's oh uh, no, that was in twenty twenty as well. Okay, so what? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, where have I been, oh, yeah. bro? <laughs> that is crazy, oh, yeah. man. Um, so. I think we're both in a, a phase. I just a, yeah, a, a, a weird phase right now where I feel like I'm trying to put my foot somewhere that is comfortable, but is causing me like challenging me to like grow out of a certain season. And I think he's kind of like in the same place. So I'm like, you know what? Let's not rush this. Yeah. Let's like take our time. Yeah. And we're both like occupied with different things too. The best music comes out of things like that. Yeah. You know, once you like step away. What I realize is once you step away, every time I step away mm-hmm. and I like come back to it, yeah, I make a better song than I did before. Mm-hmm. It's almost like I grew. I don't know why that happens, but maybe yeah. I'm just weird. No, but no, you know, I so. if I sit no. there and I like for like days and days and days, you know, I just get like writer's block. Yeah. And I like overpower my mind. <laughs> And so, you know, I'm one of the people where I get bored really fast. Mm-hmm. So I have to step away. Yeah. For like a month or two, mm-hmm. and then go back to it, and then I'm just refreshed. Yeah. So. Well, and you know what they say: if you have to force it, it's probably crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's good. I mean, that's Literally, not what they say, so but true. I can't yeah. curse on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. For me, when it comes to writing specifically, um, it just kind of hits you. Yeah, I yeah. I don't mm-hmm. really push for it, although mm-hmm. I do write a lot. Like. The only time I'm not writing heavily is when I'm mixing heavily. Like yeah. if I'm if I'm in the middle of a project and I'm editing and writing yep. and recording all the time, <clears throat> like I usually don't write a whole lot other than that. I'll co-write with people or like I'll help somebody that we're like working with write. Um but usually if I finish or by the time I finish a record I'm working on, then I've got I'm like, all right, I'm in like my brain like relaxes yeah. from hearing <laughs> like the same song for like ten hours in a day and goes, yeah, Okay. Mm-hmm. New ideas seem like that might be a good thing, you know? Yep. And so I kind of right. get a little bit of a, of a like ebb and flow there with writing. But that's probably the most, I, I put out like the same, it's far less than I write. That's for yeah. sure. Like yeah. I, I do not, I, I think it can be good and bad. I, I suffer from the perfectionist thing and sometimes I feel like it's great because I, when I put out my own stuff, uh, I tend to, not do it until it's something I'm going to be happy with. At the same time, I'm happy with very little. And so yeah. it takes, I, I feel like I probably overdo it sometimes. And like, there's probably some songs that I could have put out that are basically done that I like held back on to the point where I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. know, maybe I could have put that one out. Maybe I shouldn't have passed yeah. on it, you know? And yeah. you kind of wonder, I guess maybe just as years go mm-hmm. by, because yep. I'm a little, old, I'm not a lot older than you, but I'm six years, six years older than you. I'm 27. So. There are definitely songs I wrote when I was 21 that I don't think I've put out any of them. I don't think. Maybe like one set of like five songs from when I was in my Yeah, there's 20s. been like some songs that have persisted and like we just keep transferring it to the next project we're yep. going to do, yeah. but they've still mm-hmm. never I seen the light of day. It doesn't make it. 
I I started off being like struggling to sing. That was a really mm -hmm. tough one for me. Mm -hmm. And so I spent like years feeling like I wasn't good enough with the singing. And then in all that, like part of the reason I got into production in the first place was because I was so into it that I basically wanted that to be at a certain level before I was putting stuff out too. And so I just spent years yeah. and years and years working on like how to, and what I, uh, the biggest full circle thing for me with that has been getting to help younger mm -hmm. artists. Mm -hmm. That's been my favorite part about that. Mm -hmm. This is that like, yeah. yeah, part of you feels like, okay, I've, I've, you know, I've spent five, six, seven years like learning how to make like a great track and put it out and edit a vocal really well and yeah. make sure drums sound like this or whatever. Uh, but ultimately it took me so long to learn it that like, I've got like five years of songs stored up. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Which now I'm like getting to the place where like we're working on a set of, I think it's 11 right mm -hmm. now. And uh, I'm, I like- It's daunting. Literally, yeah, it is daunting <laughs> now. Cause now it's like, okay, there's no more excuses. Like yeah. you've got enough songs that you really like. You've got the ability to do it. The only, the only question now is, are you going to? Yep. And like, that's where we're sitting in front of and I such a it's discipline such a man game. It's such discipline a game. you gotta like yep. know like look mm -hmm. like this is what i'm gonna make 100 percent. and yep. then you know i've got to put this out um because there's some songs man that I've, i haven't put out that i wasn't like gonna put out mm -hmm. and then i sent it to someone to listen to and they're like oh my god dude bro this is it they're yeah. like put it out yeah. and i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> i didn't think so Shit. but okay yeah. Yeah, because you know with um who was it it was juice world man that was like i didn't think lucid dreams yeah was gonna be the song yeah i thought yeah. it was gonna be that one yeah or yeah. i thought it was gonna be this one and sometimes that is how it works yeah. mm -hmm. like you don't think this song is it and then you put it out and they're like wow that's why i'm like i battle because i'm like man this song mm -hmm. sucks but whatever i'm not putting it out yep. and someone else hears it and they're like Bro, that's the best song you ever wrote. Yeah. What are you doing? Have you ever had one that like you didn't think you were gonna like as much, and other people were like, "Man, you gotta, that's gotta happen." Uh, honestly, no. No. Yeah, because most of the music I've written, I've put out. I think there's only one or two songs. I found one of those songs actually. On my John is built different. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it's just interesting. John yes, is like, I'm yeah. built different. different. I, I don't put out a song I don't like. Now what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm perfect. And if you don't like it, then I don't like you. <laughs> I, I do think, I do legit, like, I, I think that artists are different. You know? Yeah. And that's yeah. one of those things where for me, it, it, it was being a producer at the same time and wanting mm -hmm. to spend a ton of time working mm -hmm. on that. Like mm -hmm. I like sucked into that world. And and it really, it actually taught me a lesson though, which was, is that in producing, right? Like a lot of people, mm -hmm. one of the first hurdles to people working on songs is, oh, I mm -hmm. don't have the right gear or I don't know yeah. how. Yeah. And like, that is one of the first things that if you want to record music, like you got to get over that so fast. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise you're never going to put anything out. Like mm -hmm. if you're afraid to do something that's worse than somebody else, then you should just give up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> Hey, yeah. and, Thunderhead was a lot worse than a lot of other <laughs> yeah, people, yeah, bro. Yeah. That was about as low as yeah. you could get. So it was, that was like the first place I really worked on that. And then it was sort of just, and, and also, I mean, like we're all believers here. So yeah. discernment on what you should do. And, yep. and you know, mm -hmm. that was a big thing for me too. So, um, for the first few years, like especially getting married young, learning to write together, that's a hurdle. That's a big hurdle. Mm. And learning to work together in music yeah. and yeah. like overcoming what it's like to argue. Yeah. Uh, and, and like you're fighting and then like rehearsal is supposed <laughs> to happen and you're like, it's not going to happen. Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> we, we both come from such different backgrounds that sometimes like yeah. he'd write something or play something and I'm like, I don't like it. And he's like, why? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I just don't. And he's like hearing different things that I'm hearing. And I'm just like, yep. I, don't, I don't know what's gelling. Can't put it to words. And I'm not like, I'm not a writer either. So like yeah. sometimes mm. I'm just like, I, just I would legit, I would legitimately say it was probably the first like three, four years before we worked out, like the ability to actually do music mm -hmm. together. Yeah. It took us, it took us, I mean, Marriage in and of itself is a difficult thing. Yeah. And you have to prioritize that. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that people don't have, to, like, I'm sure there are people that, that the music portion of it works right away. But either right. way, like, marriage is a, is a, uh, like, one, it's great. Mm -hmm. Two, it takes work. And, like, there's things to focus on that, you know, obviously, m music. I would take not notes over my wife, you know, in my mind. Yeah, congratulations, <laughs> take on notes. Your, congratulations, man. On I appreciate 
that. <laughs> um, I appreciate it too. Yes. <laughs> so let me let me ask you this, Scott. What's up? What is the biggest hurdle you've overcome as artist? You feel like Ooh. the biggest hurdle? Yeah. Comparison. Mm. Um, because I'm one that uh, I like to compare myself to other people, and I'm like, oh well, they made it. They can do this, but I'm not. Yeah. Where am I at? So comparison is one of them things that it's like, you got to realize that when it's your time, mm. it'll be your time to shine. Mm-hmm. Some people just get their time to shine before you do. Yeah. Um. So it's like, it's not that you're not going to shine. It's just, can you be patient enough to get to your shine? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So comparison has been one of my biggest battles, man. Yeah. Um, just because it brings a lot of doubt. Um, because mm-hmm. you see everyone else, they're up there like people younger than me have done made it. Mm-hmm. They're mainstream, they're touring, they're doing this, they're making money, their families are good, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then you're like, Man, I'm older than them. Mm-hmm. And I'm still and you're 21. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> and so it's like, oh, man, like, you know, but still it's I know. like it's, I remember feeling that way at yeah. twenty one and I still yeah. feel that way at twenty seven. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure there are times where you feel that way at you're thirty three, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And like it For never sure. that never goes yeah. away. Yeah. It's it never crazy. it doesn't because I feel like time's running out. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's a gift and a curse. Mm-hmm. So but you know, comparison it really is another gift and a curse because mm-hmm. you know, you see these people make it and you can take it as okay, I give up, I quit, I'm done, or dude, I'm gonna grind right. harder, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm gonna exactly. get there. Yeah, you and, can either take notes or you can And like I said, I, yeah, yeah, I'm a very like competitive exactly. guy. So it's like yeah. I just wanna like punch a wall and I'm like looking at these yeah, people man. and they're like made it and I'm just sitting here and I'm like, dude, I'm so much better than they are. Like <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's the the inner thoughts you know? yeah you gotta be bold you know yeah um so this is a question we ask everybody okay. um and it's kind of the whole basis for the show and that's just like what does music yeah. mean to you and why is it important i like this question <laughs> come on young boy <laughs> music is like all i know i i grew up on it you know from <clears throat> literally 13 to where i am now and I put so much time into it that I'm like not good at anything else. So if this doesn't work out, which it will, it's just a matter of time, then I've got nothing to really fall back on. With that, you know, with music being, you know, just all I know, it literally played as an, a coping mechanism for me through my teenage years yeah. to where I am now. Um, it helped me so much that I just, you really can't explain it. Um, people turn to, you know, drugs, people turn to alcohol, people turn to this, people turn to that. Mine was my studio. Yeah. And so when something happened to me, that's where I went and that's where I stayed. And it was almost like after I got done recording a song, I felt 10 times better than before I even recorded it. Yeah. So it was really like a, a massive coping mechanism for me. And it, it was just like mm. therapy, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So crazy. Yeah. I'm crazy. I, I yeah. definitely It's I've, crazy, bro. <laughs> I've I've been there as well. Like, especially writing for me is what really became yep. specifically writing. Mm-hmm. I I I think recording in and of itself is something that i recognize like oh i like really enjoy this Mm -hmm. but it's very uh like technical in nature for me yeah and then there's a creative piece of it when i'm doing all the tracking but the writing as far as like coping goes like in therapy like it's definitely like pen to paper yeah i mean i'm i'm a junkie with that and it's like i will write songs i think are terrible just because i know i can sit down and like at the end of it I will feel better. Yeah. And literally. <laughs> it literally like, works like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bizarre. It's, it's journal for me. What about you? I know we've said this, but we haven't said it on season two yet. So it works. <laughs> what does music mean to me? Yeah. You can answer. That. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's changed a lot over the years. I had a very distant relationship with music for a long time because it was like something my dad did, or it was yep. like something I was immersed in, but like not really like 
wasn't my thing. I was, you know, I danced for a long time. I did a lot of other stuff. Um, but then you marry into it <laughs> and you're like, okay, it's about to become my thing. Otherwise we're just going to annoy the crap out of each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a, it was a, like, it wasn't like a, like a, I don't want to say standard cause I don't mean it that way. Cause that just sounds rude. What I mean is, is that if people didn't like music, they didn't like me. Cause that's all I would yeah. talk about. Oh. I was like, you're just going to find me annoying <laughs> yeah. if you can't. Like it, it, it was, it had everything to do with, I would start talking to people. It's the whole reason I have a podcast yep. about talking about music and if people didn't want to talk to me about that, eventually they'd be like, dude, you know, I'm like, like, bro, yeah, like, just, shut up. I'm like, just going to like, ghost me and walk away from yeah. nothing. And yeah. I was like, all right, I guess I should, you know, they don't like not playing specifically, but just somebody yeah. who wasn't going to be bothered by me yeah. the way that yeah. I am, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah, but because I don't, I don't write or, um, I play a little, but I, I don't like, I'm not the one that tracks anything because he's way cleaner at no, it than I am. No, her voice though. And it became more of a thing of like, this is what we do. Like I took ownership over it at a certain point and it became a little bit more of an identifier, but I think honestly, I'm still kind of figuring out mm. what music means to me. Like it means like being in the worship realm too, you know, obviously it automatically equates to that when you're a worship yep. leader, you're like music is worship, you know, to it a is. certain mm -hmm. degree, but I'm still kind of figuring that out, honestly. So I'll let y'all know that season three. <laughs> cool. What about you, Jonah? Anything, anything profoundly like new since oh, you were on new. Your episode? Yeah, I about to say, because yeah. y'all already yeah. know. But you yeah. know what? To be honest, um, let's hear it. I would say also that it's a guide. Mm. Um, man, I remember listening to um, a podcast on South Side Rabbi. And um, what? Yeah, South Side Rabbi. I remember South Side Rabbi. Uh-uh. Okay, KB and I'm in. Oh, yeah, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Trip Lee was on there. Okay. And they oh, yo, were basically like young. Yeah. yeah, I love Trip Lee. And he basically yeah. just interviewed him. Um, and I can't remember who said it, um, but I remember um this person saying, Oh yeah, it was Trip Lee saying Sweet Victory, that song. Sweet um Victory. There was, was somebody that was literally about to commit suicide and that song like led them yep. away from that so i look at it as a guide and somebody you know god using um a voice to basically lead them out you know from a you know a place of darkness um and and a lot of us don't know Took that we are yeah that. man i mean a lot of oh. us don't know that we're leaders mm -hmm. of music like we are um, leaders in ministry leading um, uh, people who are in the dark to the light and allowing the Holy Spirit to do that for us. So that's uh, lately I've Take been seeing light. that. Yeah. Take the light now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the light. So um, I've been really seeing that music is a guide to Jesus, you know, mm. or it can be a guide to the darkness. So, so you were talking about like, uh, <clears throat> has there time to shine, right? Mm -hmm. like what's, what would you say like the what's one of the bucket lists like what's one of the dreams for you mm -hmm. i feel like one of the things that i <clears throat> i just i want to happen is just to be able to you know collab with like one of the people that i look up to of course i can't collab with juice world you know yeah r.i.p um but to collab with like somebody like hopson like that's mm -hmm. what i like I would love to collab with Hobson. Yeah. Um, that would just be sick. Opener. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, that that would just yeah. be awesome, yeah. man. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, one of the things, another one is just to be able to have a good, loyal fan base. Like, if you can have a good, loyal fan a base, one. dude, yeah. you could take over, like, the world, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you could do crazy things yep. with a good loyal mm -hmm. fan base. Yep. Not not as just you're good to them. Not yep. just a fan yeah. base. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's got fans, right? A loyal fan base yeah. that, you know, they listen to your music as soon as it drops. They're on your merch store buying stuff, you yeah. know, because your fans make your artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without fans, there is no artist really. Yeah. So no, well, at least nobody knows about them with no fans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's a good. That's so, a good answer. Yeah. Now, what's uh, what would you say is like um a positive <clears throat> thing that's happened to you in the music industry so far? Like, what's one of the best experiences you've had? The best experience would be just hearing people that listen to my music mm -hmm. come to me and they're like, like man, like that actually helped me. 
Mm. Like you sent me this song, you know, like I felt that Mm -hmm. I relate to that. Yeah. Mm. And like, it helped me Yeah, like more than what, you know, like when you hear comments like that, you're like, wow. Like it gives you motivation to keep going because you know, some days like you wake up and you're like, dude, I suck. I ain't going nowhere. (laughs) Not going to make it. And then the next day I wake up and I'm like, I'm the man, you know, like my songs are dope. I'm going somewhere. And then the next day it's like, well, that was sucky. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's one of the things I struggle with. Like, um, but just hearing people comment and say things like that really like get the, you know, the drive going. Yeah, sometimes that's like a better compliment Mm -hmm. than like, you sounded so good or like, you play really well. You know, like hearing someone Mm -hmm. like, man, that song means so much to me. That's like almost better. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes you feel like it's, it's worth you know, yeah. not so unprofessional. My own, <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. My own show. Oh no, that might yeah, be a sound night. effect. <laughs> no, I think that's the weather. <laughs> it sure is the yeah, weather. I'm pretty sure that was the weather app. Back with your weather, man. <laughs> Scott Billy Miller. Patterson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you were talking about singing earlier, <laughs> yep. and actually, I feel yeah. like you two are kind of kindred in this. This is so crazy. Is yeah, Karma. Is that the first one that has like singing, like heavily involved in it? Heavily, I guess. Heavily. Yes. Okay. And then for you, it was give my love, right? Yeah. And those are like literally like yeah. almost those are close together, both of you. Yeah. Now what you was don't that, take my love. What <laughs> what was that like? Like <laughs> Oof. I mean you said you wrote it at home on a piano because I asked yeah. you this earlier. So actually mm. Preston, my engineer, he had done some rearranging to a studio and everything. Mm. I walk in and I had like started picking up piano and everything. Mm-hmm. Walked in and looked to my left and there was an organ. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, what? So I like, I went <laughs> and I, like I jumped on it, yeah. right? Because it got me excited. So yeah. I just started playing. Yeah, he was hyped. And I started playing chords and I'm like, oh, this sounds so familiar. Yeah. And I was like, mm. nah, nah, nah. and then I was like, wait a minute. I went to my Google Drive on my phone mm-hmm. and I pulled up a song that I had made in like, like 2018 2019 yeah was listening to the beat and it was like the same exact chords oh nice and i'm like i'm using this so i started playing the chords man and next thing i know preston whipped out a guitar yeah and he's like strumming it and he's like no 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 and i'm like hmm do that again so you know what i'm yeah. saying like, so organically <laughs> yeah it, it, nice. yeah that was one of the first tracks that was actually the first track that we made everything from Every scratch piece on it yeah. everything was from scratch yeah you know from the guitar to the to the piano to uh you know the drum kit to the drums in the in the end you know like he played the drums at the end and like everything it was nice. it was like mind-blowing that yeah, is the track like a full band at the yeah, end of it. yeah that yeah. was the tr- I, that was the track i'm most proud of mm-hmm. so <clears throat> <clears throat> lot, so that when like my the next thing I had written down evolved or changed over the years, I definitely could tell when I listened to that song. Yep, and same for you with "Give My Love." Yeah, like listening to them, those were both things where I saw each of you like push for something yep. different and purposefully mm-hmm. yep. bring it into your music and yeah. still keep some of your like your the style that you've yep. always had. Correct. You know that's yeah. like, that was mm-hmm. in both of those as well. John Green for us, it's been like. Uh, honestly, I think doing worship songs was something we never mm-hmm. planned to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like my, I think our initial Like writing take, them? Yeah, like yeah. writing them. And it, we... Hey, side note, man. Brandon Lake is amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is gosh, great. yeah. Love yes. Brandon Lake. He yeah. is great. Um, yeah, like we never, we never really planned to do that. It just kind of happened. No, we were like... I don't like calling. I don't like songs. calling them bar songs, no, but that's, but that's kind of the vibe that we're yeah. It was just like what would <laughs> what would be the most fun to play a bar? That yeah. was like the whole. Yeah. that was originally that kind of swanky rock yeah. kind of vibe, but we but could try to bring that into some of our worship music. Be through the years, <laughs> like I would say that, and then and then singing <clears> together has been the biggest thing. Like, yeah, in a place where that sounds developed because. You're, you're dealt the hand you're dealt with as far as yeah. like range and everything goes. And like, yeah. you got to learn to to yep. figure out what you can do within that. And then like over the years, like your range changes, you mm-hmm. get better, you can do oh, more yeah. things. And like that yeah. has been the biggest, I think, evolution for us. Where like yeah. now we put a song down and like we were listening back to some demos today and I was like, 
that sounds like us. Like it yep. doesn't sound like someone mm-hmm. else. And we were mm-hmm. talking about this right. earlier. Like it sounds like us. <clears throat> and, <throat> and it it doesn't. I'm sure there's there's influences. I'm not saying we're you know like I don't think I'm the 100% most original unique. person, but I yeah. but I try well, my hardest. That's how it was for me with like karma, man. Um, yeah, because I had still struggled to really like find my sound. Yeah, and when we had made uh, karma, it was like this is different. Yeah, like we just blended like rap and alternative and, and rock. like, yeah, so- like soft rock yeah. and like. <clears throat> Even though I was still kind of rapping in it, like the and TikTok then, acoustic thing, you like know, at the you, beginning, you like it's I mean? all in there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was like, this is a style like I want to like go with. Of course, you know, it, I like being diverse. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah. I like to sing, I like to rap, I like to rap sing or whatever. Mm-hmm. But with Karma, it's like, dude, I've got to do this again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've got to do another track like this. But yeah. also, you know, of course, I still drop something lyrical from time to time or whatever. Right. Um, that's just. Hey, that's who yeah. Scott Miller is lyrically. Yeah, you know what I'm saying that's so, good. All right, I'm gonna yeah. bring us. I'm gonna bring us to a little bit of a close. I got one more question for for both of you, and yeah. then we'll we'll wrap with a question about the song. All right. Um. So tell me about your process. This is we're doing mm-hmm. like we said, Brandon. Question for each season. So this is gonna be seasons two, and I'm actually really glad you're here because I can ask you this, and then awesome. I can have you in the video too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> t- tell us about your process of taking a song yep. from start to finish. So. For some people, that means like writing it, but for yep. other people, that means putting it out. So whatever that means to you. So when I hear that, I mean, you know, just like coming up with it. Um, for me, one of the biggest things that like sparks a song for me is like I'm driving mm-hmm. and like something just hits me. And I'm like, well, yo, that's dope. Like I'll just be, no, no, you know what I mean? Just in my own world, bro. And yeah. then it's like, I, I think of like two bars. Mm-hmm. I pull out my phone. I record it on my Snapchat. You know, and that's just I don't use voice memo. I don't Snapchat. So, some people nice. do, bro. Yeah. But you I'm know, voice memos all day. You yeah. know, but I've like, never done, why dope. Snapchat, <laughs> dude? It's just this that, is I've that, never. That's heard the this. app like I use the most. And so, <laughs> can you I, like? Okay, so this is really sad. I'm. Yeah. I don't know Snapchat at all. Really? So, that's fine. Yeah, I've never downloaded it. What? You're missing out, brother. Nothing. Yeah, never. <laughs> so, so I'm totally, help this man, bro. I'm totally, <laughs> oh, God. I'm totally naive to what Snapchat. Like, I can't tell you. you. I'm sorry. You no, just got to do so it yourself, bro. Though, like, when you're What's recording up? that, are you sending it to somebody else, or does it? No. Will it save it? Just oh for no, now? no, nobody's getting oh, that. Oh, they one do side. have a new platform. I forgot where you can yeah. you can post it to a like to get it out there out there my, my understanding was that yeah. snapchat yeah, was sending knows? stuff the from spotlight. one person to another yeah. so my thing was it snapchat so I, right I, I, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I know nothing i don't i can't i don't know my tiktok log yeah, yet. I'm really yeah. Bad with so this. that's fine basically it, it was just like i would record on my phone i would record my voice and then i would save it so it would save to my like gallery on my phone okay got you so that way, you know, instead of just writing it down, I don't forget the flow that I wanted <clears> to <throat> have. So I have the flow and the lyrics there. Gotcha. Now, sometimes I start with a beat. Okay. Normally, I don't. Yeah. Normally, I already have a concept of what, like, I want to throw down on a beat. Mm-hmm. So, like, I have, like, the two bars on my Snapchat. Okay. And some people start from the hook. Some people do this. You know, there's some songs I've done. But majority of the time, I'll take the two bars I have, and I'll build from there. And mm-hmm. I might write to them. Mm-hmm. Before I ever go to the studio and hear a beat, I might write to it and then just mm-hmm. perfect the flow around the beat. Okay. Um it's just kind of all in the moment. Now, karma was just totally different. Like right. that, that was just like. So you kind of have like when you're hunting for mm-hmm. or when they're, when you're demoing out different beats, like you already have a cadence that you're hunting. Then does it fit? Yeah. Does it fit over? Like, does it fit with that? Is like one of the questions you're trying to answer when you start hearing different beats? Yeah. So it's almost like I'm very weird with beats. Okay. Like beats is one of the things that I'm like super picky with. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't have a guitar, if it doesn't have a piano, I don't mm-hmm. want it. Okay. Mm. So it's like, that's what gives me, I would say, like a lot of my sound. And okay. like, that's who Scott Miller is. Yeah. It's like the piano and a guitar. Yeah. So that's what I need. Organic. Yeah. Kind of like, like, uh, like melodic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> I pick one of those or whatever. Mm. And if it goes with my lyrics, cool. If mm. it don't, then it's time to rework my lyrics. Yeah. And to put them how they go to the beat. Mm. So nice. 
Mm. So once you have that worked out, it's just like yep. the process of recording yep. it, get it mixed, release it. Yep. Yeah. So, what about you? Yeah, mine's is kind of the same. Like I'll be driving, I'll be somewhere. Hey, don't and copy just, me, bro. No, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm comparing like myself to each other. Scott Miller. Right? There's no, there's no what is logical young and reason better than you guys me, should no. influence one another's riding <laughs> No, right? <laughs> nah. Um, sometimes, like, you know, things just pop up and I put in my notes, you know. But honestly, I have to have a beat. Um, it's something about the beat that drives me. Now, I might have ideas while I'm driving. Like, it just pops up and I just save it. But when the beat comes up, it's like I'm with the flow, right? And I'm like literally envision myself rapping or singing to this song and um, trying to see how I can draw these people in. Like I even psychic. think about <laughs> like once that once the mute like once the beat is playing, I am envisioning yeah. myself. You just feel it, bro. Like you know yeah, what I'm I like, do. It, it yeah, does, it I do. And I'm like I, I think about situations like from you know economical economical political to um you know world devastation um i just like think of everything at once when and i'm like world devastation it sounds um, metal as yeah. all oh. <laughs> yeah. destroying that's brother. a band that's a band i yeah, bet you yeah, i'm sure it is yeah probably has to be yeah <laughs> world devastation <laughs> meeting next and <laughs> john i'm like world devastation <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny, bro. and like it's it's just crazy because I really think about how can I connect with people yeah. from the beginning yeah, you're considering the audience to the thing. hook. Yeah. yeah. And then even the end and the bridge, I'm like, how can I make it even more connecting with I the bridge? I never knew and this hook? about you. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, That's yeah. That's dope. It's just, it's just crazy, <laughs> That's man. I learned yeah. something new, man. It's, it's just crazy. Like when I'm playing music, I'm literally like trying to say, how can I connect to people and make it feel so genuine, yeah. you know? You're feeling I mean, that, I can tell. Yeah, bro. Body language, it, I can tell. Yeah, Jonah's like, Bro, yeah. without a beat, it's a like, guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, That was one of the first things <laughs> really I learned thoughtful. in having you on the podcast. Like, mm -hmm. And I've always, I've always, I've, I've said this about you on the last show, like yeah. one of the kindest hearted people I know. I uh, appreciate then, that, bro. But like how, what was crazy to me <clears> is how well you track questions. Like oh. I will, run, I would run too far over, and I would like ask two questions, and Jonah remembers the first one, and he won't answer them out of order. Like yeah. he would, he would like Jonah. Are he, you OCD, bro? Said, he are you OCD? Said, to answer your first question, like that yeah. was how you started, and I was like, oh, I'm so, I like felt bad in the moment because I, know, I was like, like slow down, oh, I'm asking yeah. him too much, too many things. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that was one of the things I noticed for for me with writing from yeah. start to finish. It's been. It sounds similar, but like a lot of it's guitar based for me. Yep. Just yeah. That's my first instrument. So yep. yeah. either I hear something that like strikes <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, I totally have a melody. Like at one mm -hmm. point we have a song coming out that I literally was sitting on the couch. I thought of a run and I like did the run like a few different times. And I was like, oh, that's going to be a cool song. Yeah. yeah. And then I went and grabbed mm -hmm. the guitar and worked it out. Other times, like the song we did last season, a song called Demon in You. And the riff for that I wrote at like 19 and I had it and I like mm. when I got to the place where That's I crazy. felt like I was good enough, she hummed something and I was like, this song's about to happen and I yeah. already yeah. know it. Yes. And so you get it, excited. Yeah. It changes up a little bit that yeah. way for me as well. That's good. All right. I'm going to bring yeah. us too close here. Uh -huh. Scott, I'm going to ask you last question. Uh, tell us about the song you're doing today. Tell us what it is and tell us kind of the story behind it. Hey. So... so <laughs> I was gonna do karma, but you know, <laughs> no, that not. sucks, man. Uh, <laughs> studio burned down. RIP to the stew, man, baby. We're sorry to hear about that, man. We didn't, we didn't know yeah. about it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I heard Jonah had told me, I don't, yeah. I don't, we, I did it in a group text. I let, hey, bro, yeah. we had um, we had known it was a, unfortunately a church that, mm -hmm. that burned down. Yeah, but I didn't yeah. realize, really, man, his song was that he was exactly. making was just fire, bro. Was, yeah, them. <laughs> that song hey, was just too good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That That's a challenge to say. Do it again. Yeah, I, I yeah, I caught that. that but mm -hmm. yeah, so it was good and also bad. Ooh. Yeah, it was terrible. That's karma for you. I know, right? <laughs> anyway, so tell us about. So us. the song is ego. Um, <clears throat> it was one of them songs that I was like, I feel like every artist kind of needs that song to show like they can actually like do it. Yeah. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like. I get some people don't like to flex or do do like a flex track or whatever, but I feel like it's good to actually do mm. so people can actually be like, oh, wow, like, yo, he can spit. <clears throat> and a lot of people like uh, songs like that. Yeah. So, you know, this song was really a song that I took and 
like tested myself on. You know what I mean? Um, had this producer, um, I know him, and uh, he he had the beat, and uh, he sent me the beat, and like me and the beat just clicked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was one of them types of beats that it was just like boom, like instant. Yeah. And dude, I just I just went. And you you ever have mm-hmm. that where you know you just you feel the beat like it just flows. Yeah, and you're done and writing the song yeah, within bro. like two minutes. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had those I mean, moments. It was just one of them. <clears throat> and you know, a lot of times when I write, you know, I've had like someone be like, "What are you talking about? Mm. Like, who who were you talking about in this song?" And I make up like this scenario in my head that people doubt me right Mm. and so it's almost like i'm writing to this scenario in my head of my doubters you know what i'm saying and so you know it's like for the ones who do doubt me like okay here you go this will answer you you tell me you tell me if this (laughs) Mm -hmm. sucks you know what i'm saying like here Mm -hmm. take this and i feel like that's another thing that's led me to be so like so much better than what i was because i constantly think in my mind like you know like okay people doubt you or whatever like talk to these people Mm -hmm. yeah but it's almost like that's me myself so i'm talking to myself you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like this weird thing but you know ego was just one of them tracks that i was like you got to do this like you have to go hard on this track Mm -hmm. yeah and it was just boom yeah fire Mm. nice yeah so cool well we're excited to hear it cool in a couple minutes here in like three weeks for people listening mm. to this but yeah. Yep. yeah it's delayed now <laughs> time to do production we, got, yes, we, got, we need time yeah. to edit but um yeah thank you so much for everybody who's been listening and watching with us thank you so much hey, scott thank for you guys for having me on, on. Yeah, appreciate awesome, it's both you here. Yeah, i'm great. so glad to be here again and yeah. without further ado here is ego by scott miller hey. later Shawty, I'm sorry I can't miss shooting my shot, no way I'll pay Baby, my heart's too damaged, asking me how in the world I manage Watching me taking advantage, pull up in a phantom, nickname Gambit Watching you boys like dandruff, you don't want war, dog. this is my planet Me and my boys go camping, I don't need fire too hot for the canvas You and your squad outlanded, if I'm on the scene then your girl gon' vanish Ooh, yeah. I ain't even planned it, y'all got swag in her heart, I'm a bandit Ooh, Y'all know dog had a camera, did they go home in the sand and slammed him Ay, From the 704 on the west side, who the baby I don't know, I'm the best guy Out of my city, I don't care who's with me, never had no friends Growing up been me since a jitty, me, myself, and I Shawty, I'm sorry I lied when I apologize I don't really care if you cry, but you can't say I never tried I ain't had love in a minute, if I died now, I'ma go out winning Baby, that man you got ain't with it, should've stayed with me since the beginning Uh, look, I don't really care if I fit in, look, look Boy, better keep your distance. Ask my dog to the realest. They reply back like Scott to the Miller. Ay, look, y'all know girls in Landrum. One of them bad for my health like cancer. Ooh, yeah, I'm way too handsome to get played by bro. This is my anthem. Ay, right now I'm eating a sandwich. About to hit the gym when my boys throw a tantrum. Hey, they wanna see me fall roll ransom. Till I pull up, now your whole squad dancing. Lately my ego been in beast mode. Got a helo point blank range. Might drop me amigo. Yeah, I'm too good. I don't need no cheat code. Might serve you on this side like Pico. Ooh, have a nice trip, dog. Go find talent. You gonna Need every little piece, cause right now all I see is way below average. Come to find out, y'all really am savage. Take my feelings a ripple for every single one of you to try to sell me a gimmick. I got a bargain to pick with a couple different individuals. I'm mixing the chemicals, every single ounce of pain to set me up on the pinnacle. Separating from the crowd, I had to do a self interview. Fed a luxury reaction, I had to pop me a Benadryl. Gotta stay away before I pass out, this is critical. Can't stick around with the two faced pitifuls. Make the blue face integrals on a new way pivotal. Do day miracle, my ego made me invisible. Get a taste, you might turn to a criminal. On the sideline, I see five guys, might serve them all beef on a fine line. Can't socialize, cause I I heard through the grapevine, dog throwing shade, I died. Yeah, one, two, had to peel off, yeah, I still talk, get a real job, that's why they say still gonna doubt me, even if I get a deal, dog, got a skill saw, I'ma build y'all a new wave like a seesaw, they gon' ride how you up, then you down right now, got me peed off, I do not be long, in the same lane with hella entertainers, yeah, I'm here to reap y'all, reap y'all. <laughs> You gon' die, you gon' die, you gon' die right now if you push your luck How many times do I gotta say I don't got no love? Yeah, my shawty too bad and I'm still young, Ooh. Couldn't count on one hand who I really trust Yeah, I'm new to the game, but I'm here to be great Got a couple round clips, I can bust for the fun I'm gonna stop till I'm done and I'm covered in blood shawty, I'm sorry I can't miss shooting my shot, no way I'll pay Baby, my heart's too damaged, asking me how in the world I manage 
Watching me take an advantage, pull up in a fan on nickname Gambit. Watching you boys like danger if you don't want war dog, this is my planet. planet. D. Scott Miller, Instagram, TikTok. Shout out to Patterson Recordings. We out.